Beautiful. All right, joining us via Zoom today is another kind of famous Hale Sporting alumni, Theo Deropoulos. Now, Theo um, currently works in Adelaide, but is a first-class cricketer um, in his previous uh, career uh, and has a lot of great stories to tell from his time at Hale and then his time in uh, professional sport. So joining us to speak to um, Theo today are our first 11 captain, uh, Matthew Scholthorpe, and also our vice captain, James. So firstly, Theo, thanks for agreeing to join us. Really appreciate it. Absolute pleasure. Excellent. So I'm going to pass over to uh, Matthew to start with, who's just going to ask you a few questions about your time at Hale um, and then your career, and then I'll hand over to James. Yeah, sure. All right. Thanks, Theo. Thanks for being here tonight, today. Uh, so growing up, you went to Hale. Can you tell us a bit about the sports you played as a teenager? <laughs> um, well, it was mainly footy and cricket. Um, I was probably better at cricket than I was at footy. And it got to the stage where, like sort of most youngsters, you have to make a call on whether you continue one or the other. And footy season started to train. They started to do pre-seasons for the age I was at in about January. So given that was the start of, you know, Hale School cricket and, and the middle of the grade cricket season, I sort of shelved footy and wanted to stick with cricket. And so the, the most fond memories I have, and it was, it was almost like a bit of a sad memory at the time, was having to leave Scarborough A-grade cricket to resume to go and play for Hale. But at sort of 15 or 16 to go back and play for the school was, it was, it was enormous. It was just everything for us. So yeah, fond, fond memories of, of rolling up to, to school and we would go have hits with the coach then Derek Chadwick down at lunchtime. We'd go in and he'd fire up the ball machines on a Monday afternoon. And that was our sort of lunch break for the time. So yeah, it was uh, mainly footy and cricket, but yeah, cricket was the number one. Thanks. Uh, so, house sport at Hale was obviously pretty big. Uh, first of all, what house were you in and what memories do you have of playing house sport? Uh, I was in Buntean. Um, memories, of, memories of house sport. We played... So, back in 99, we had the captain of cricket and the vice captain of cricket playing in, in a house game on Brian 2 against St. George, which had a bloke called Brett Jones, who was the captain in 99. And um, I, remember, I remember playing that game and those two guys encouraging me a lot more to sort of take on house sport as, um, as, like a, as first 11 cricket, really. So it was that sort of initiation with those guys and playing against the best players around the school that helped me sort of develop a little bit of a love for it. And then as I got older, <clears throat> sort of felt like it was our responsibility to go into house sport and absolutely obliterate anyone else who was playing because we were the first 11 guys and, and it was up to us to show why we were in that situation. And yeah, house sport became a little more than a Wednesday afternoon muck around. It became a chance to show that we were that far ahead of the other guys. So look, rightly or wrongly, yeah, we, we loved it. And it's, how good is it beating your mates? It's nothing better yeah. than getting your mate out or hitting him for four. Or, so, yeah, house sport was brilliant. Uh, playing for Hale in the PSA competition, what would be the best sporting win that you were involved in? And why do you reckon you still remember it to this day? Uh, best win? Um, the first one, definitely. The first one was against Wesley. We were three for nine, four for 15, maybe. Um, batted first on Friday afternoon. And then we played them recently in term four the year before and they, they rolled us, I reckon. They rolled us like sort of two or three down. They embarrassed us a touch. So that game, the first game back, new season, 2000 at Wesley, um, I reckon we scrambled to sort of 250 and the one bloke who stitched us up in term four, we managed to get him out early on as a year 10. My first game, I took a couple of poles and I just remember the feeling of being in the middle of the huddle when, when we won. We batted again in the second innings and fell over a little bit, but like we'd sort of won and 
and that very first feeling of like, all right, I sort of feel like I belong a little bit, but I hadn't made any runs. Um, but yeah, I remember the first one vividly. And I think the last one was at Scotch. Last game of the year of 2002 was at Scotch. And I'm not sure if we needed to win to retain the cup, but we did win anyway. We won, we won six out of six that year. And just the, the, the finality of that was like, right, this is it. This is the way we should go out. You know, we sort of did the right thing again. Um, it was it was a bit of sweet, you know, like you wouldn't get the opportunity to do that again. But gee, any time you can go out holding the cup, just brings a smile on my face thinking about it now. But definitely the first yeah. one. I remember the first one enormously, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll jump in now. We talk a fair bit about um, what it takes to be a team player at Hale. Do you remember a player past or present that was the best <laughs> team man you've ever associated with and what sort of made him special? At Hale or in general? Uh, just in general. Uh, best team man in general. Um, well, we'll start with, I'll think, of, I'll think of who it is. In terms of what makes him, I tend to think um, the best team men are guys that they do stuff on the field when your team needs it. You know, they, they stand up in certain areas. And then also, they're just blokes you love being around. So, you know, everyone's got their different ways of going about stuff. Like, I remember playing grade cricket with Justin Langer and he used to take grade cricket as seriously as a test match where you sort of think, well, blokes just want to rock up, have a bit of a game and enjoy themselves. Like, he used to sledge just and get stuck in and you think, well, the bloke next to me got home at five in the morning, so we can't take it too seriously, but we're all trying our best. Um, but there, there are just certain guys you love playing with. And there was a bloke, his brother went to Hale in my year. He went to Hale as well, actually, David Bandy. He would have been maybe graduated in 96 or 97. Um, would have been in um, Haynes House. And he played for Scarborough for years. And he was just a guy that he performed immensely under huge pressure. He was a ripping bloke to be around. And just as a 16, 17-year-old kid looking up to him, you know, I sort of wanted to model what I did on him and just remember idolising him. And, and yeah, he was just good to be around because he made you feel like you were a bit better than what you were and you enjoyed some times off the field with him as well. So, yeah, he was definitely one. I think that characteristic, you know, like you, you'd sort of see guys and you sort of walk a little bit taller when you're there, when they're there with you. Yeah, definitely. All right, let's talk uh, professional sport now. Obviously, many, many boys dream of doing that and you spent the better part of a decade as a professional sportsman. What is the best bit about about it all? Uh, well, I would have liked to do it a little bit more than I did. Um, the best part, best part, well, you're doing something you love and get paid for it. Like, we're talking, you know, like, not many people would be able to say that. So, whatever it is, if it was, you know, if you love accounting and you want to be an accountant and you get paid to do that, that's a dream gig. So for cricket, you know, that was, it was awesome. Like going out of school and, and playing club cricket with your mates and then to get paid for it and travel around the country and around the world, really. And yeah, that's easily the best bit. But I mean, I've, I've felt pretty inadequate when I look at some of the guys I played with and against. Like my first Western Australian training session, I think we were down at City Beach. So, you know, where the... Um, What's the, the the two restaurants down the bottom is City Beach, where the uh, the bottom uh, of the boulevard sort of thing. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, like yeah. Clancy's. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those sorts of ones. So we're, we're standing down there, and I think I was maybe 17, 18, standing next to Hussey Langer, Ryan Campbell. Like these these guys are. I'm not not a, don't even deserve oh, wow. to be in the same conversation. So. You're sort of thinking, well, how do I fit into all this? Like, it just does. I just don't want to embarrass myself. And you think, like, to grow up eventually playing with them and, and calling them sort of your mates and your peers and stuff, um, it's a bit surreal, you know, to think, like, I could call Justin Langer now and he'd answer the phone. Like, those sorts of things that come out of cricket and, um, you know, winning games for Hale and for Scarborough, they're, they're sort of... They're, they're bonds that'll never be broken, as you guys have found out in the last two years, like, 
you go away for 30 years, you'll come back and you guys will still be mates the same way you are now. It's, um, it, it beats any dollar you'll ever earn for playing cricket, I promise you that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, you're working as a media sports reporter for Channel 7 in Adelaide. Again, this is a pretty, pretty cool job. Uh, how did you get into that role and what's the best bit about, about doing that? Well, um, how did I get into it? Basically, like most sportsmen, when their careers are coming to an end, forced or unforced to try and latch onto something. And that was in the media because it, it basically, you just get paid to talk, which is, that's <laughs> all I wanted to do. And to be involved in yeah. sport is good. So I just basically called someone and said, look, you know, I'm in Adelaide. Do you know anyone? Um, and they introduced me to the boss of sport here, which was good. He, he was aware of some stuff I'd done. And I pretty much came into seven for maybe a day, a fortnight for three or four months for free just to sort of learn how it was all done while I was studying a degree. And, you know, my sort of mantra was just don't stuff it up. Like in, in cricket, you've got runs, you know, or wickets. You say, well, I'm good at this because I've, I've done, I've performed well. Where in this, it's, it's a little bit trickier. Like there's no real way to measure how you're going. Um, the same way we like to in sport. So if I made 100 and you made 50, I'm better than you today. That's just the nature of it. We're here, it's a little bit different. Um, so it's just a matter of sort of hanging in and, and doing the right thing and not stuffing it up and appreciating that you're in a room full of professionals too. So who have all been doing stuff a lot longer than I had. So it was a pretty cool way to start. Like it was sort of chucked in the deep end and go for it. And the best bit about it is, well, you're talking about cricket, you're talking about footy each day and they're paying you money to do it. Like it's, again, it's that old mantra that if you do something you love, it won't feel like work. Like this is actually, it's actually the way forward. Um, but I mean, there are things that you don't like doing. Like if a bloke gets hurt, you've got to sit outside a hospital and wait for him to come out and ask how his knee feeling. Like that sucks. Like you understand that guys yeah. are sort of human beings and they just want to yeah. go play footy, go home to their wives and partners and live their lives, you know. So we try and do things the right way. And I think um, that's been the toughest part is coming from the athlete side, going to this side is, you know, you sort of appreciate that guys are in situations when their careers end or they hurt themselves that, you know, it's not all about us. Like we got to do things the right way. So having a chance to do that, I suppose, is a bit of a privilege. But it is bloody cool, you know, <laughs> every second week at the footy and, you know, rub shoulders with Virat Kohli and these guys are, you know, worldwide names in sport when they come to Adelaide. It's, you know, you, they're things you'd buy in auction items if you could, you know spend a week watching Australia train and play cricket and then go into the rooms afterwards. I, it's, it's bloody awesome, really. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll ask you a question. Um, we've talked about some of the highlights of your career. Um, were there any points where you did doubt yourself, your be it selection, physical, mental, and what advice would you give to, to kids Man, both inside and outside of sport where they might have those hurdles that are, that are coming up? Um, yeah, I did. I did a fair bit, actually, because I was sort of always on the fringe of teams. So I was never really first picked for, for WA, even when I was going well. Like, our team was Rogers, Langer, Voges, North, Marsh, Marsh. Like, how do you get into that team? And then that's when Hussey was away playing for Australia. So, yeah, for me to get into the team was pretty hard. And when I did, it was always – it felt like if you don't make 100 or perform well in the first hit, then, you know, you're going to be out. Um, that made it pretty tricky. Um, I think the key for me was preparing well. So that was the whole thing. of, And, and it, I've carried that into, into work now is – I felt like if I could go in to a situation with my mind at ease, then I felt like I'd perform, you know, a little bit better than if I hadn't. Um, you know, obviously it didn't always work, but you sort of stack the odds in your favour a little bit, I suppose. And that if you know you're playing against a certain player or a certain scenario, then, you know, just try and create a few scenarios you might be in and deal with them as best you can. But again, as you guys know, cricket is so bloody hard. You can do everything right and you still come up with absolutely nothing. And that's the ruthless part of it is when you're doing it for a crust. I mean, my last game was up at the Gabba against Ryan Harris on a green wicket. You sort of think, I can prepare all day for this, but 
mm. at the end of the day, you've got one of Australia's premier fast bowlers on a wicket where the curators have prepared it to get off in two days because they want to go on end of season break. So look, the game's not always fair. It's, it's yeah. not always yeah. easy. But yeah, yeah. I, had, I had a fair few doubts and it yeah. wasn't whether no, I it's... wanted to play. Yeah, it was more so whether I was good enough to compete with these sort of guys. And you get you get that belief through performance. But, yeah, I'd say that they weren't readily available. And, you know, you've yeah. got a ball that's coming up. Yeah. 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 Now, I heard something that told me, I said I was um, interviewing you. Is it true or not? And you can feel free to tell the story that you were batting on Craig Oval and you hit one on top of the, uh, what we now call the Mad Centre, the John Inverarity Music and Drama Centre. Is that, is there any truth to that? Um, nah, I don't think so. I don't think, I don't think it was just one. I think it was about half a dozen. <laughs> Uh, all good now we've asked everyone um that we're interviewing two questions on a lighter note birkenstocks it's a thing that are frowned upon on the east coast it seems to be a bit of a craze on the west coast where given you're in adelaide now where do you where do you sit on birkenstocks generally there um uh, i'll keep this short very hard no from me yeah, okay. Well, that's, uh, I think your, your credibility in my eyes has just gone straight up. Um, well, what's the sound like with the boys? What about the youngsters? Oh, I don't have them. Jimmy does. Well, I'm currently wearing a pair, but. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, Tom Lynch, like Tom Lynch from the Crows wears them every single day, and I see him in them all the time, <laughs> and they just look rancid. My missus has them, I just can't oh. get around them. <laughs> <laughs> And the last one, uh, Theo. So Tuesday, probably the same when you're at school here, was pie day where all the boarders um, and all the staff get meat pies. And some of the stuff that the boarders do with the meat pies, um, particularly like they sometimes take the roof off them, they put the sauce in it, and then some go with a spoon then or some with a fork, some put the roof back on. How, how does Theo Dropolis eat a meat pie? Well, I don't think we had pie days. I'm not sure about that, but... Okay. Like the one thing I didn't know here in Adelaide, Adelaide's so weird. They're, no one's here. They're the w weirdest state in the, uh, outside of Queensland, <laughs> this is one of the weirdest. Uh, and let's be honest, Queensland is the, the weirdest of weird places. But <laughs> here they, they grab the sauce and they just shove the sauce bottle straight through the roof of the pie. So they just like, like a bloody forensic <laughs> syringe straight into the middle of the pie. <laughs> No, so, oh. look, I've, I've had to live with that. I'm not, not happy with it, but I would tend to um, just cover the lid in sauce, leave the lid intact and just cover the lid in sauce. The more sauce, the better for me. I'd, I'd, I'd say I'd have more sauce to meat in my ratio. I like it. And does sauce at your house go in the fridge or the cupboard? Say again? Does sauce at your household, does it belong in the fridge or the cupboard? Uh, no, cupboard. Coming. Okay, oh. that's yeah. James, you're not happy with that? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fridge man for my sauce. Same. That's a bit cold. Tomato, tomato or barbecue? <laughs> Both. Tomato every time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. All right. Theo, mate, we'll leave it there. Really appreciate uh, you joining us today. I hope uh, you and your family stay safe in the in the weeks and months ahead. And uh, um, yeah, to hear about your you know, I mean, memories and still your, your connections with, with Hale and, and how much this place meant to you is pretty special. And I think the kids listening at home today, and they're probably all going to be across the state listening to this in time, we'll, um, you know, we'll get a lot from it. So I really appreciate it. No, it's a pleasure. It was... Um... A, a, a surprise when I got your your message and something I was quite excited for actually because I haven't been back to old Hales uh, old boys day for a while and place to see like old boys playing in the games the, against the young the youngsters coming up and you know, no matter how how far and wide you go you always look back with the, the fondest of memories and to see you guys you young guys achieve something special um, it's a it really brings a smile, smile to my face knowing what the celebrations would have been like for you guys having done it previously. So, uh, absolute privilege. And, yeah, I really appreciate the opportunity to chat with you. Thank you. Good work, guys. Thanks, Theo. You have a good day. All right, Luke. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Thanks. See you, boys.
<laughs> Still you recording and you're the um you're the uh, you're the host now apparently. <laughs> I'm ending it in. <laughs>